whether or not you need to get the coffee assist machine today or whether or not you need to use it today is something that's going to be tailored to you. Um, but, but definitely there is the concept that it's better to know about it and to get experience with it when you don't really need it in more of a preventative way than to try to get used to it and know how to use it um, correctly when you acutely need it. So, um, so I think because my, as a pulmonologist and also my background as a, as a pediatrician, you know, our, my um, philosophy of care is definitely education and prevention. You know, and it's still, the, the adage for Benjamin Franklin is, you know, uh, ounce, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And, and I think that definitely applies to, um, to, the, to, to, to patients and families with SMA. So whenever a patient with SMA comes to see me, regardless of their age and their diagnosis, I talk to them about the cough assist machine and, um, and its possible uses. Um, there, is, there has been some concern about uh, using the cough assist machine in very young kids, and usually that means kids under the age of two. And I think it's important to realize that um, if, the, if the cough assist machine is being introduced by someone who actually is knowledgeable about its use in a practical sense, that it can be very useful also in the very young with there being a big learning curve. And that the best way to use the cough assist machine is to have it be demonstrated in a non-acute manner um, uh, in my case, in my clinic, with myself and, um, and m my respiratory therapist who's very knowledgeable in using it, with the caregivers um, and the particular SMA individual. And seeing what it looks like, you know, um, how scary it is, you know, what happens when you turn it on, and what the machine really feels like to the caregiver as well. So we always have the caregiver try it on first, and then we put it on the, 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 the individual of SMA. Um, and, and, and what has happened with the use of cough assist is that there's, there, now there's really two indications in terms of two, or two applications for the use of the cough assist machine. One application, which is the one that most people know, is a way of mobilizing secretions and is a very effective way of mobilizing secretions um, when, you're, when you um, are basically um, very congested in your, in your lungs and your upper airway. The other indication for uh, the cough assist machine um, is using it specifically to help with chest expansion. And that's different because one way it's being used more for um, um, uh, prevention of maybe an infection occurring or when you have an infection or an issue to help get you through this as a medical necessity versus uh, the second application, which is sort of a preventative approach to try to prevent um, a, a structural change from occurring. So f for individuals with SMA, um, what we find is because of the weakness of their muscle tone in their chest cavity, that because of that, um, they're not able to sustain or grow a, what we consider a um, more normal appearing chest cage. So your chest cage develops as a combination of your muscles, your intercostal muscles, and uh, your intrapleural pressure and atmospheric pressure, and there has to be this give and take. And what happens with kids with SMA is they kind of lose that battle and their chest starts to cave in. And because of that, then they have problems with, uh, you know, um, more ability to have mucus plugs and atelectasis and, uh, you know, not the optimal lung growth that we want and then problems with being able to oxygenate and ventilate well. And so um, one way to help with that is, you know, using the cough assist as a means of trying to sort of um, instill pressure and then trying to um, um, help build the chest cage up. So, um, and, and in some individuals, um, you'll find that that can be more really uh, um, applicable or make changes faster the younger you are. 
So by so what happens is our chest case changes with time. When we're very young, it's very compliant or easily movable. As we get older, it gets really stiffer. And actually, when you get to be an elderly age, then it actually is more compliant again, but that's because of age-related changes.